EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and why can't we have nice things? <laughs> um, this video is actually going to be called something like, Why Can't We Have These Cards? And I will be talking about Mystery Booster 2, and I'm, I'm actually shocked I'm making more than one video about that. This title for the video is going to be a bit of a double entendre, of course, because one of the big issues with this set, I guess you could call it, is... It's going to be really hard to get your hands on. It's only available at like conventions and stuff. And I think they're doing a secret layer drop. I actually was, because I, I thought this this thing was so neat, I was actually giving strong consideration to doing, actually grabbing a box to crack open on the channel. I've never cracked packs on my channel before. I thought it would be something new that I could do. And it that certainly is an interesting one to be cracking open packs for. And, you know, my patrons <laughs> inform me that, Good luck with that, right? Good luck getting your hands on it. So that's definitely something that is a little frustrating. And again, there's gonna be a little bit of a frustration in this video, be prepared for that. So it's a little bit of a frustration starting out with, here's this product that, you know, all of a sudden there's a lot of people that are interested in it, but yet now it's not easy to get your hands on. So, wow, way to shoot yourself in the foot there, Wizards of the Coast. But there's some other stuff as well with regards to why can't we have these cards? We'll start out, of course, though, if you're not at all familiar with what's going on here, they reprinted a bunch of cards, some with new art and some without, and of course, for me, I always love reprints with brand new art. The Future Sight Frame is the big one. That's the one that is going to, I, I think, probably attract the most attention. In particular, some of these multicolored legends, very interesting. Of course, we've never seen a multicolored card with a Future Sight Frame before, so that's pretty darn interesting. And I have a couple of patrons with Miri Weatherlight Duelist decks that I, I was pointing out, hey man, you guys, I might actually run out and try to get my hands on this if I had a Miri deck or if I had an Okagachi Vengeful Kami deck. Man, this is such, again, we've never seen a five color card. We've never seen a lot of things going on here. This has the original art, but man, this looks really cool. I gotta be honest with all the colors there on the side. Um, a lot of people really hate the the mana cost on the side. It is a little weird. You obviously couldn't do like a progenitus in a card frame like this. Certain cards just wouldn't work. So there is that as well, but this does look pretty cool. I gotta say. There also is white bordered cards, which I think people are probably a little less excited about, but it is something different. It is something unique that I like. I already covered that in the last video. I will be talking about something completely different in this video, and that is the actual mystery booster cards, what, what they originally did in the mystery booster set, which was essentially like, hey, here's a neat idea, right? Not actual cards, just here's a neat idea, and let's see what you guys think of it. And funny enough, in the original future site, that's exactly what they did. They sort of just threw out all these neat ideas that some they revisited later and some they did not. And that's more what I'm gonna be going over here. This video is about, hey, how come they're making it so that we can't get our hands on these cards that we actually want? That annoys me a little bit. But also a lot of these mystery booster ideas to me are things that are way better than what we already have. It's stuff that I'm looking at and I'm going, why aren't we already doing this, you know? And I know a lot of you guys really like Bloomboro, but I didn't. I mean, I didn't love the aesthetic for one. And for two, I thought the mechanics were really uninspiring. I mean, pretty much all of them were just rehashes of something we already had. Like Valiant was essentially heroic. Um, we got the offspring mechanic, which was essentially squad. <laughs> the mechanic we got from... Uh, Warhammer 40k. I really didn't think the mechanics were really that interesting from that set. I know a lot of people liked them. I didn't. I thought they were pretty lame. You know, I, I know people think I'm being a downer or people will say, okay, well, what are they supposed to do? They're running out of ideas or whatever. They're supposed to do exactly what we're seeing on these mystery booster cards. There's so many unique, interesting things that I'm seeing here. And I'm thinking, why aren't they already doing that, right? So this Avacyn's Collar has this shackle ability, which is an equipment ability. But of course, shackling is putting it on your opponent's creatures, right? Shackle three, attach the target creature you don't control. Shackle only is a sorcery. So it's the equip ability, but you're putting it on your opponent's creature. I will say, though, I actually, I mean, I, I don't even know why they already don't have this. And... Although some of the names here are goofy, they're, they're goofing around a little bit, but Shackle, perfect name, everything about this, perfect. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, why are they not already doing that? We already have equipment that does, you know, a few of them that attach, I think for sure at least one that attach to your opponent's creatures, but it's extremely rare, obviously, because you can only equip to your own creatures. The one thing I would actually change about this is I would just say attach to target creature, 
not a creature you don't control, you should be able to actually shackle your own creatures as well. So I, I, I'd love to see this ability in a set. Maybe it will be coming up, but shackle the equip ability for any creature. I think it's a great idea. How about this one? Uh, this is Bridget who sees some stuff. <laughs> So this is a, another bridge. This is a legendary creature. And again, there's some very interesting possible commanders from this set as well. So it has this nimble ability, which isn't entirely unique, but they're just giving a name for it, right? This creature can't be blocked by creatures of power three or greater, which is sort of a Kifkin ability. Obviously, this is a Kifkin and sort of a Kifkin tribal commander as well. So that's neat. I mean, again, not super original, but it's neat that they gave a name to it. This other one is really neat. Kifkin, you control have thought weft, a creature with Thought Weft has all printed keyword abilities of other creatures you control with Thought Weft. So of course, this is going to be a Kithkin you control. It's gonna have Thought Weft and it has Vigilance and Nimble. So it's going to give all your other creatures with Thought Weft, Vigilance and Nimble. And of course, all your Kithkin have Thought Weft. I mean, this is really the tribal ability, you know, and of course everyone likes tribal and commander and Wizards of the Coast certainly likes printing those tribal commanders in every single set. And Thought Weft is perfect for that, right? It really does fit perfectly because your commander is imbuing all those abilities on all the, the other creatures of that tribe, Vigilance and Nimble. And of course, if you had another Kithkin, I guess it would have to have, well, yeah, your Kithkin have Thought Weft. So if you had another Kithkin with First Strike, it would give First Strike to all your other creatures, right? It's essentially Odric, right? It, it's Odric that gives all the abilities to your other creatures. They're just sort of, I mean, it sort of works that way, but in a tribal aspect, right? Really neat. This one I like a lot. So Bolt Fire, one red mana sorcery deals two damage to any target. So it's a sorcery speed shock, pretty terrible. However, it has Flash Forward. And maybe I would change the name, maybe not. Four and a red. So you may cast this card from exile for its flash forward cost, then put it on the bottom of your library. So of course it is like flashback, except from your graveyard, it's from exile. And man, with all the exile tribal stuff we got coming out, this would probably fit in a lot of different scenarios. The funny thing about this is if you could give it flashback, so you cast this thing to do a two damage name target, it goes to your graveyard. If you you know cast a past in flames or something, give it flashback, you can flash it back from your graveyard, which of course then will put it in exile. And once it's in exile, <laughs> you can cast it from exile by for its flash forward cost. And then, you know, maybe you'll see it again, maybe you won't. I think this is a great ability. Again, it's, it's one that I'm like, man, it's, I'm surprised we don't have this already. We got a whole lot of lands from this set that have really interesting ability. So Fetching Garden is both a forest and a plains. So of course that means it taps for green and white and enters the battlefield tapped if it was played from your hand. So that's a really neat sort of you know, dual land alternative. They're always figuring out some sort of drawback. I wonder if people might think this is too good though, because of course, fetching it, yeah, you know, that's why it's called fetching garden, obviously. Fetching it is easy, especially in green, because I can get this with a nature's lore. I can get it with three visits, wood elves. There's so many things that can get this and it will enter the battlefield untapped. But I think that's okay. You know, again, if I play it from my hand, it's, it, it's guaranteed to come into play tapped. So that makes it certainly worse. If I fetch it, it comes into play untapped. Obviously you could do a whole cycle of these, maybe, maybe not, but I think it's a pretty interesting idea. So is Madlands, enters the battlefield tap, taps to add a black or red. And again, you could do a cycle, but you don't have to, all right? We don't have to do a cycle of lands for everything. You can just do them in specific colors. This is enters the battlefield tapped and gives you those two colors, but also has madness and it's zero. So of course that means if you discard it, you may discard it in exile and then you may play it for its madness cost. And of course we've never seen madness on a land before and of obviously playing it for zero, casting it for zero, whatever. I wonder though, if this could get into some sticky rules situations where I mean, I guess you're not casting it. You are just playing it from exile and it's madness cost is zero. So, but you still would have to pay the zero. I don't know. I wonder if the, the, that would get into some sticky situations with rules, but still neat idea. Madness on a land, right? How about this one? Land casualty two. So Maestro's totally safe hideout. Again, the names are a little goofy. As this land enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature with power two or greater if you do create a token that's a copy of it. Pretty neat way to ramp in, you know, colors that don't ramp very well, which again, 
something that people complain about a lot in the commander format is green is so good at ramping. Let's get some other options for all these other color combinations. And of course, Grixis would be a color combination that doesn't include green. This enters the battlefield tapped and gives you the three colors in Grixis, right? Blue, black, and red. But of course, I can play it and sacrifice a creature with power two or greater and create a token copy. So I'm ramping, right? It is essentially I'm sacrificing a creature to ramp, which again, that's something that I don't know. Again, is it too good? I don't know. That That's the one thing where, you know, with lands, it becomes really difficult to evaluate whether or not an ability is too good or not. I think this is fine. You're not going to be able to do it super early because you're not going to have a power two or greater creature out on the table on turn one or two. So I think this is perfectly okay. And it's another three color land option as well, which is good. How about Under Construction Skyscraper? A land with level up. Very interesting idea. So it's going to start out as a land that just taps for colorless. And then level one to seven, it's going to be a land that taps for white, black, green, or colorless. It's weird that they threw colorless in there as well. Um, of course, because the level up is just a generic mana, this can pay the level up for itself, right? So you can have this come into play. As soon as you play it, let's say you play it on turn one, you play it and then immediately you can tap it to pay for its own ability. So it's immediately level one. And then when you untap on your next turn, it will tap for the three colors you need, which of course is really no different than any of those three color lands that just enter the battlefield tap. You know, you can't use them right away. I mean, this you could use right away and it also cap taps for colorless mana. So it is, I guess, a strict upgrade. And then also if you happen to give it, get it to level eight, when you tap it for white, black, green, or colorless, you also get a scry one, which is, you know, that's okay. Are you ever going to get it to level eight? I guess if you just have mana lying around, you could. Nevertheless, I think it's a really neat idea. They got so many neat ideas in this set that I, I kind of wish we had these cards. Probably the one that I wish we had the most, and I really hope they print this card. I love it. Naturalize two, which again, name it whatever. It doesn't really matter. One in a green instant, destroy target artifact or enchantment or emblem. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast. I talked about this, man, in a video so long ago, I can't even remember which one it was. One of the things that annoyed me most about Planeswalkers, any longtime viewer of mine will know that I don't like Planeswalkers. One of the things that annoyed me the most when they first came out is this idea of emblems that you couldn't interact with. Once they were there, you know, I just do not love the idea of having things in the game that we can't interact with. And I have always hated emblems. And why not just print a card that can get rid of an emblem? You know, it's gonna happen almost never. It's gonna happen once in a blue moon that your opponent's actually gonna have an emblem or possibly even give you an emblem where you can use this. You know, again, the, the people will say, oh, how often is that gonna happen? Once in a, in a thousand games maybe, but it still might happen. I mean, every other time I can just destroy an artifact or enchantment, but the opportunity, I want a card that is able to get rid of emblems. We need one, but they also tacked on here or gameplay tracker. And of course, when I first saw that, I was like, gameplay tracker, what's that? Trackers include play aids such as dungeons, which again, <laughs> if anyone remembers when Forgotten Realms came out, I'm not the biggest fan of the dungeon mechanic either. And one of the reasons why is because I hate that we can't interact with it. And I know people will say, okay, well, it's just a, it's just a gameplay tracker. It's not actually in the game. Yeah, but it is a thing. It is a thing that I want to be able to interact with. Being able to destroy those dungeons is actually relevant. Being able to get rid of them, right? It actually is relevant. You can also get rid of the city's blessing and you can also get rid of the monarchy. Love it. Love it. And I, you know, I'm not a guy who ever thought, hey, why can't we get rid of the city's blessing or the monarchy? But I think it is actually important to have those things. You know, I mean, who, why would you ever want to get rid of the monarchy? Because your buddy's playing his Marchesa deck where he's got his pillow fort going and he just draws a free card every turn. And I just think it's really funny to be able to draw this card and just go, blam, now your monarchy's gone, right? I mean, they can just get it back. I would love to have a card like this in the commander format. I like the opportunity to be able to do that if you want to. Maybe you're just that guy who, again, you, you have a buddy who has a Marchesa pillow fort deck and you're just sick and tired of it and you would throw this card in your deck in a heartbeat. Maybe you got a buddy who plays Super Friends decks. They're always getting those emblems and you'd love to get rid of them and you're just going to put this in all your decks, right? Or maybe you just replace whatever artifact and enchantment removal. This is what I would do. If this card actually existed and I hope someday they print it, what I would do is I would probably just go to likely all of my green decks, take out whatever naturalize effect I have in there, a Crossing Grip or whatever, 
and I would replace it with this and just 99% of the time destroy an artifact or enchantment, but also if the opportunity arises where my opponent has an emblem, I can react and actually destroy it. I love it. Love this card. And I wish we had it. I wish we had that card in the commander format. And I wish we had a lot of these cards in the commander format. And, you know, a lot of people saying out there, I complain too much. A lot of the things I'm seeing from these new sets, I'm just like, oh, this is kind of lame and boring and uninspiring. And I don't love it a whole lot. And the things I'm seeing from this is way more interesting. Why aren't they doing some of this stuff? Why can't we have these cards? I think they are fantastic. A lot of these ideas are way better than what we currently have in a lot of the newer sets, in my opinion. You guys let me know in the comments below what you think. That is it for today, though, and thanks for tuning in.